Welcome to this presentation of uh, setting up a table that we have to transpose in su such a way that we can run a one-way ANOVA and a post hoc test, the Tukis. Uh, we also will be working with two different uh, tables. As you'll see, we create one that's called G from our original glioblastoma.csv, if you've been following these. Um, and then we uh, transpose it to one uh, Z and uh, we end up with a bar graph with error bars, and here are my sources. So let me move this to the side and expose R here and expand my instructions. Okay, so we are going to label our first table, our table label, as G equals read.cs. CSV file dot choose open close parentheses comma header equals uppercase T close parentheses it's going to prompt us to go find our table I go to my R files find glioblastoma I've been saying glioblastoma all these times and one time realized it's globastoma <laughs> my eyes not in there Okay, and now if we type G, we see our familiar table. You see this first column is going to give us some troubles because it's not a vector, it's not a numerical value. Um, what we'll see is that we are ignoring this uh, classification of the data into two uh, data sets as we've used it before, into one that has a uh, sample size of 10 and we are going to uh, perform an analysis of variance asking the question if you will testing the hypothesis or the null hypothesis uh, that uh, at least one of these gene expression levels the mean over all 10 of these uh, out of all of them will be different than some other one all right so we're saying well we took this sample and uh, is there any significant difference between the expression levels of these sets of genes right Maybe they're all supposed to be the same, and one of them or more of them is off in a pathology or something like that. Uh, so it's kind of an odd experiment, but uh, it'll work for now. Uh, so uh, we now need to transpose it. So a new table named Z, right arrow, or left arrow, excuse me. Uh, stack is the command for this, and uh, we are going to uh, use our first table G. So we'll now have a table Z and a table G. <clears throat> and I told you that first column is going to give us some trouble, but that's not a problem. If we hit Z now, we see what we have, right? But notice that um, we need to. Uh, these are the values and this is the independent variable right so we need to to name those now name our columns so names for Z left arrow column or the C first one is going to be level comma second one is going to be gene now we do uh, Z again Oh, I can just do names of Z, right, rather than scroll up there, level and gene. If I scrolled up here, you'd, you'd see that up there. Okay, that's fine. Now let's do the analysis of variance. We're calling our, we're naming our uh, ANOVA table, if you will, or, or ANOVA results, AV1. You can call it anything. If you're following me, just use what I'm using. Uh, AOV is the command for the ANOVA level tilde gene and get your data from table z data equals z okay now if we type summary it'll give us our ANOVA table so you would copy this table uh, and uh, you know, paste it into your Word report or something like that. So as we're going along, uh, think about how you'd be extracting this information to generate your... So this is your ANOVA table. So we get with a one-way ANOVA, and we're asked the question, uh, you know, is there a significant effect of genes? The degrees of freedom are, uh, are 21. 
the sum square and mean square given here, the f values given here, and then the probability greater than f, and we're very significant, and you can see that it is uh, p is much less than 0 0.001, right? 2e to the negative, so 2 times 10 to the minus 16th. And we see our residuals here. Okay, uh, let's do a box plot of g and label the y-axis, y-lab, y-label equals in quotation marks when we're titling things here, level, and then x-lab, x-label equals, oops, gene, close parentheses, over here on the side, another window popped open with a graph in it. I'm just going to squish it up. Uh, looks better when you make it bigger. You can adjust it and things like that. Notice that uh, we have our gene label on the x-axis, level on the y-axis. Uh, here it's going up uh, above 12 on the y-axis. And we get the median and uh, with the box plot, the median and the first quartile and the, the 75th percent, right? The third quartile, I think, is what that is. I haven't looked it up since last time, but you can check it. Okay, so I'm going to uh, close that. <clears throat> so there must be some commands. I don't know. We, we have to get rid of treatment group to make this look correct. Uh, you know, why are not all the genes showing up? The font is too large or something like that. So they're labeling problems with trying to get too many things on one graph. But that's where we are. Okay, now we want to do the post hoc analysis. So click on this to activate that window. And we're going to call it TK is the result. Left arrow. T, uppercase T U K E Y H S D uppercase two key H S D test on the A V one. Now, if we type T K, we see the results of our multiple uh, comparisons, right? So every gene compared to every other gene, we get the the difference between the means, <clears throat> the lower and the upper 95th confidence intervals. And then the P adjusted, and you can see we have a 1, not good, and then some that are very significant, and others that are might not, ha after we did the Bonferroni correction, uh, may not, ha and I don't know what this P adjustive is, if they applied some correction or not. But anyway, this is the results of our uh, ANOVA comparing, excuse me, our post hoc uh, Tukey's HSD for multiple comparisons of means, right? Uh, next, what we can do is we can plot that, plot TK, and over on the right, a graph came up, okay, and this is kind of a busy graph, especially when I scrunch it, but basically any that cross the zero line, if zero is between the lower and the upper 95% CI, uh, that's not going to be significant, so all these over here would be, and all these over here would be, and we have our labels for the comparisons and uh, differences in mean levels of the gene shown there. Okay, so there's probably a lot more that can be done with the plots. We're just uh, trying to generate them now. Uh, a few other things we can do is we can do the uh, standard deviation of Z. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, so that just gave us the standard deviation of the whole column of number, numbers in the standard deviation. It's telling us probably that's not what you want to do. You should use S apply. Uh, so we'll, we'll see that a little bit later. Uh, we can count the number of rows in G. That would be more likely to give us the sample size. Remember our two different tables. Uh, Z is just a long list of numbers, all of them together, uh, whereas uh, the uh, <coughs> Uh, the number of rows in G is going to still be the 10. If you've forgotten what G looked like there, so it just counted these. <coughs> Whereas Z is 220, right? Okay. Uh, the length of G will tell us how many columns we have, 23. So uh, remember we've got minus 1 for our treatment group there, the label, so we should have 22 genes, I guess. Okay, now uh, there's a formula, and I'm just going to uh, see, I need AV1 here. 
to get my degrees of freedom and my error. Uh, there's a formula that should calculate the distance, uh, the difference between uh, our confidence intervals. And uh, you can check one of the sources there. It should be two times our uh, error here, residual standard error, 0 0.6016. 087 uh, di divided by the sample size, the 10. Oop. 10. Uh, little hat here, I've forgotten the formal term for that, to the 0.5. So the square root of, hopefully you're recognizing that that is uh, similar to calculating the, the standard error. This is the residual standard error over the square root of the n uh, times this value, the Q-T-U-K-E-Y, for the 0 0.95 confidence interval, n means uh, equals uh, 21, this degrees of freedom here, and df equals, I put in the 198, the other one here, so if you look at the source, he doesn't tell, say exactly what he's doing, but anyway, and I forgot my second uh, parentheses there, to close parentheses. If you uh, look at the, uh, your table again, uh, results of the TK, uh, if we look it's uh, 3.9 and 4.9, so it's it's only about 0.9 something difference, and so that didn't work. But anyway, it just shows you can start putting in these formula and stuff like that. Okay, now let's uh, see what we can do here. Uh, S S apply G comma mean will calculate the mean for each column in the S apply, but it won't generate a new table for us to plot. Again, the treatment group is giving us trouble. Um, so uh, we can make a table G well, treatment group close parentheses. That gives us a frequency table of how many A's and how many B's are there. And we know there are five of each. That gives us our ten, right? So that's not going to generate a table that we can use to graph. So what we need to do is um, use the T apply. We're going to make a new table C with our means. And it will be T apply Z dollar sign level z dollar sign gene mean and we look at c now we've got a table with the data stored with our mean so we can plot that we can r plot c okay and here's what we've got but we don't have error bars we don't have any labels and it's just gray okay and this will exceed that. I don't know, you know, because this doesn't go to 11, I guess, or 12. These are jumping in doubles. It won't go to the next one, and it won't show a partial one is the way I understand that. But I'm going to close it because we want to try to get error bars on there. Uh, and what I'll, I'm going to do, and then we'll calculate the standard error of the mean, but we're running out of time in this first one. Uh, let's just stop there. We got to that point of completing the ANOVA understanding the post hoc analysis uh, and we did a bar plot of our means and uh, I'll do a separate one uh, picking up from here.